Hello, my name is Tony Topping, and I've lived in Wigan all my life. The video you're about to see is a collection of my dad's photographs that illustrate our family life growing up in Wigan. Sometime in the early 60s, I'd hazard a guess at around 1962, my dad got a camera and began to develop his own photographs in the kitchen of our two up, two down house in Walgate. Now and again, I was allowed in that kitchen to watch the magic unfold in the trays before me, a memory that is still vivid today. The 60s was a time of great upheaval. I don't think any decade produced as much changes as the 60s did. Wigan is almost unrecognisable from the images in these photographs, and hopefully they will jog a few memories of what life was like back then. My mum, Jean Topping, wrote a little story titled A Happy Family about her life and her words will accompany some of the photos. I hope you enjoy this trip down memory lane. Thank you. We live with my mum, Doris, and Father John. My three brothers and my sister also lived in the house. It was always full. I had a baby son, Anthony, and then a daughter, Christine. There were ten of us living in this one house. So when me and Joe saved up enough for a deposit, we moved to a little house down Myry Lane, Walgate. Our first proper home was number 17, Yatesy Street. I had my third child, Eileen, while we lived there. There were five of us living in a two-bedroomed house. Me and Joe were very happy in that little house. We bathed the kids in a tin bath in front of the coal fire and then after we'd toast bread in front of hot coals. We loved playing family games like Ludo, Snakes and Ladders and Snap. We always had pets for the kids. Cats, dogs, rabbits, budgies, tortoises, guinea pigs. We'd all sorts over the years. Probably the strangest one we ever had was a duck. Joe went to the pet shop one day and he came home with this duckling. Kids called it Donald. It used to follow you everywhere. At first it was okay, but then it started to quack all the time very loudly. It never shut up. We finished taking it up to Wigan Park and put it in with the other ducks. When the kids were old enough, they went to St Joseph's School and Church. The school was very religious. They had the crowning of Our Lady, took part in a big walking day where all the Catholic churches walked together in Wigan. The streets were full of people. This day was called Whit Monday. All the kids walked and all the adults dressed up. They were great days.
We were very worried when Joe got the sack from his job. But he said, never mind, I'll get another one. And he did, on Monday morning. He got a job working at Trenchfield Mill. It was nearer to home and better hours, 7.30 till 5. So he was always home in time for tea with his family. We spent those long summer days going to Wigan Park or Hay Hall. And on Fridays, when Joe got his wage packet, we'd go to the first house show at the pictures. That was our treat for the week. Mary Jean Topping My mum's recently changed her name. Not in a big way. To us she's always mum, our mum. But she's gone from telling people her name's Jean Topping to saying her name is Mary Jean Topping. This is reasonable, as that's her full name. But it can be a bugger when you're looking for her in an hospital bed. Still, when you're 86 years old, you can do as you please. My mum has had it tough over the last few years. To be honest, she's not had an easy laugh, bringing up five children with her husband, Joe, and she also looked after my grandfather and uncle when her mother died. But she won't change a thing, and she loves her family, and we love her. She does love her party, though. Last August, my son Martin got married, and she was so looking forward to going to the wedding. Sadly, she spent that day and the following weeks very ill in a hospital bed. Thankfully, she made a full recovery and despite some walking difficulties, was able to enjoy little trips out and a bingo night once a week with local senior members. Then, like a black cloud blocking the sun, came the virus. Everything was put on hold once more and the family events she loved so much were derailed again. It got her down a bit. It got her family down even more. But her indomitable spirit shone through, and as she always would say, you've just got to get on with it. She did that and more when Dad died 12 years ago, and she's lived alone ever since. If I can... 
I'd like to take you back to the mid-1970s when the coastal house we lived in could have used a revolving door. It was a hub of activity, always full of relations and friends. The walls resounded with laughter and good cheer. Christmas was the highlight of the year, but not the only one on shore. Royal weddings and engagements called for dressing up, bunting and fizzy buckles with exploding corks. She also loved St Patrick's Day, being so proud of her Irish ancestors. This year, she spent St Patrick's Day alone, apart from the closest members of her family, who visited her from the safety of the Garden Gate for a moment. It didn't stop her dressing up in the emerald green. She loves put on her outfits, as much as she likes a piece of cake, and she likes cake a lot. VE Day was no different, and she was decked out in her patriotic colours with a smile a mile wide. I took a photograph of her from the bottom of the garden, and my sister Catherine sent it to the Wigan Observer, who kindly put it in their tributes to that wonderful day that rewarded us with so much sunshine. Mum was so proud, she rang everyone she knew to tell them she was in the local paper. It went a long way to lifting the disappointment of missing out on another family get-together. We, the family, can promise our mum one thing though. When this pandemic is over, we shall hold the party to end all parties, to celebrate the life of Murray Jean Topping and the love she gave us all. Thank you.